If you are brand new to content creation, the process for getting started can be super, super overwhelming because there's a lot of things to learn. There's a lot of mediums that you can create content on, and there's a lot of questions that you are definitely going to need answered. So if you are getting started with content creation or you are thinking about getting started, I want to give you some practical tips that helped me in the beginning and helped me even today for creating content. The first thing is you really just want to test out different mediums of content because there are so many different ways that you can create content online. You can start a blog and write blog posts. You can start a podcast you can start a YouTube channel. You can create reels on Instagram. You can create TikToks. There is a ton of different ways that you can start creating content and it will all be based off of your comfort level. If you really want to get started with video, but you're kind of scared to get on the camera, that's definitely under understandable. So you can start a podcast that is just audio. And if you really enjoy writing and you don't really want to show your face yet, you can start a blog. Or if you really just want to jump into the world of YouTube or TikTok, you can get started with those different mediums. But one of the things here though is you don't want to just not do something because you're scared to do it. Because when you start content creation online, you are going to be scared to do anything. You are going to be scared to launch your first blog post. You're going to be scared to launch your first video. So if you know you really want to do YouTube and you're just scared to get on camera, 100% understandable because I was definitely terrified to get on camera. And I had multiple YouTube channels before this, but you can go back and see the first video just on this channel alone. And I still looked terrified, despite the fact that I've had many YouTube channels before this, none of which I was on camera. So you can even start a YouTube channel where you aren't on camera if that's what you want to do. You can use B-roll stock footage, you can just use your voice, you can do animations, you can do video games if you want to do that. You can even do Twitch and you can do lives and you don't have to have a face cam. There is so many different ways that you can do that and there's so many different ways that you can accommodate your comfort level for whatever it is that you want to do. But I encourage you not to rule something out specifically specifically because you're scared, because you're going to be scared to do anything, whether you are launching a podcast where you don't even share your name, launching a blog where you don't even share your face or doing a YouTube video where you're just putting yourself all out there. My next tip would be to learn as much as you can and then forget all of it. And what I mean by this is you can get so far into learning about content creation and learning about how to start a YouTube channel, how to start a blog and learn all these things. And there are so many different tools out there for starting creating content online, but you might end up losing yourself in the process. There's like two main problems that I can see with this. You can lose yourself in the process and you can go where the shiny object is. And people might say like, oh, email list is where it's at. So then you create an email list. But then people say, no, actually you want to be doing YouTube shorts. So then you go create YouTube shorts. But then people say, no, TikTok's actually where it's at. So then you go over to create TikTok, but then you're like, well, you need a website. So then you start creating a website and you're doing all of these different things. And then none of them are working out because you're trying to do too much too soon. And you might not even be enjoying it. So for me, I created an email list because everybody said, create an email list. The money is in the list. You need to have a way to contact your customers and your followers outside of social media, yada, yada, yada. There's a lot of great reasons for having an email list. But for me personally, I hate email lists. I would always put it on the back burner. I would always forget that it existed. And I would email maybe once every six months or so, if that. And no one really knew who I was on the email list because I wasn't emailing them consistently. So I recently just made the decision to cancel my email list. I sent an email out to my subscriber saying, hey, in November, my email list is going to be deleted so I won't have a way to contact you. However, if you still want to stay in contact with me, why don't you check out my Discord server? So there is a way that I can still contact people and still create that connection with people because that's something that I enjoy, but the email list part of it, I absolutely hate. So if you try to follow all of the advice of everybody, you might lose what you enjoy in the process. And the second problem I can see with this is you might get into information overload where you are just constantly learning, 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 thinking that you need to know every single step and every single thing about creating a YouTube channel or writing the perfect blog post or SEO or how to upload a TikTok. You think that you need to know everything. And so you keep learning and never actually start doing. And this is definitely something that plagues a lot of people because they want everything to be perfect. And I've been doing YouTube for multiple years now, as I said, and my videos still are not perfect. They're still not at a place where I feel that they're professional enough or really at the quality level that I want them to be, but they are the quality level that I can put out. Like they're the best level of quality that I can put out with my skill set. And no video, blog post, podcast, 
podcast, anything, no type of content that you create is going to be perfect, especially when you first start. And you're going to learn better by doing than you are by listening to everybody's advice. So my best advice is to learn as much as you can because there are a bunch of tips, tools, and tricks that you can use to grow your channel or your blog faster, but then kind of forget all of that and plow ahead with what you know is best for you. And you don't want to just get an information overload, learn everything you can, and then never put anything of that into action because there's no point in learning a bunch of things if you're never going to actually do anything with it. And my next big tip would be to not compare yourself to other people. And this is obviously going to be easier said than done. If we see people doing fantastic on the internet with their businesses and we can see that they are clearly thriving and vibing and we are not we can definitely get into that comparison mode where we wonder why are we not doing as well as the other person. But the thing is, we are on so many different paths. This person might have had so much more prior knowledge. They may have had a million YouTube channels before. You really have no idea if this person has a background in writing or videography or even how many people they have helping them. Because if you are comparing your videos to someone like Mr. Beast, he has a massive team of people behind him and he's been doing this for a very long time. So of course the content is going to be better. If you are a one woman show like I am and you are talking to a camera and you have to write your own scripts, you have to do your own lighting, your editing, your filming, all of that, your product is not going to be as good as someone who has a million subscribers. But I also can see for me, like this was a problem where I would see someone who had started roughly at the same time as me, who was clearly doing better than me. And then you can get into comparison method, like, well, they have more followers than me, but they started at the exact same time as me, or they have better video quality than me, or they have better blog posts, or they can put out more content better. Why can't I do that if we started at the exact same time? And still, again, the circumstances, you really have no idea. Maybe they had four blogs before that, because that's something that I did. I had multiple blogs before I started my first, this blog that I'm currently doing and I had multiple YouTube channels. And if you just see my one channel, you would have no idea how much experience I had before this. So you just need to think about yourself because you're really only in competition with yourself. You kind of just have to put blinders on in the beginning and sometimes throughout your journey. If you are a year or two into this and you're still like, I don't understand why these people are doing better than me, you need to put those blinders on and only focus on yourself. Because if you look at where you were a year ago versus where you are today, it's probably going to be a widely different scenario and you're gonna see how much you have improved. I would try your best to not compare yourself as hard as that might be. And if you find yourself still comparing, you might want to maybe hop off social media and be like, like, okay, I'm done for a month off social media trying to focus on what everybody else is doing because I need to focus on me. Or maybe you need to unfollow those people for a little bit because even though you still like them, maybe you just need to stop watching their content. Maybe stop watching their stories, reading their blog posts, checking their feed, unfollowing them so you don't see their tweets in your timeline, something like that. And then once you are in a better mindset, then refollow them and be like, catch up and see, okay, where, where are they now? Like, what's going on? I haven't followed them in a while. Just Put blinders on, focus on yourself because you're really only in competition with yourself and you're gonna feel a lot better. Another thing is not to give up too soon because I see so many people start a YouTube channel, they put out four videos and they can't figure out why the heck their channel is not growing and then they stop because they realize this is a lot more work than they thought it was going to be. If you're only putting out four videos on your channel, if you're only putting out one blog post or maybe two TikToks and you think, why haven't I gone viral yet? Well, that's because viral is not all it's cracked up to be in the first place because once you go viral, you get maybe one good video and then that could be it the rest of your video could go back down to whatever level they were before. But if you give up too soon, you're never gonna see the results because you're starting a business here. You're starting a content creator journey where you need to put in a little bit of work week by week, day by day, month by month, and you're eventually going to see results. But I didn't start seeing results on my channel for like 20 to 30 videos. And even after that, the results were incremental and they were very small. And I still don't see what you could consider a viral video or a really well popular doing video despite the fact that I've been doing this since like 2020. So you have to really just keep going with it and you're going to realize as you do this that it's probably a lot harder than you thought it was going to be but you need to 
keep going and also be consistent with it. Because I know for me, I was wondering why my blog wasn't growing. And then I looked back and realized that the first two years I had this blog out, I was not consistent for a single month. I did not put out four blog posts every single month. Of course, I wasn't going to be seeing results because I was not consistent with it, but I was expecting these quick results. And that's not what you're gonna get. I mean, you might, but that's not really a strategy. Like going viral and hoping that you hit it big right off the bat is not really a strategy strategy. That's something that like you can aim for and be like, sure, this would be cool if this video popped off really easily or this blog posted really well for me. Maybe the pin popped off on Pinterest or something, but it's not something that you can predict or control. And you really have no idea that maybe a video will go viral, but then it doesn't really carry the rest of your video. So your next video ends up crashing. You have to really pace yourself and manage your expectations. The next tip I have for you is kind of related to the last one and it is pace yourself because you don't want to go super hard in the beginning and post, say, I'm gonna post seven videos a week. I'm gonna post five blog posts a week and then I'm gonna post over here on Twitter and I'm gonna pin over here and I'm gonna put out four TikToks a day. You are gonna burn out so unbelievably quickly that you are gonna quit way too soon. And I think that's a mistake that a lot of new content creators make is they try to do too much too quick because they're excited with the prospect of a new business, of a new content creator journey. So they create a bunch of content and then put it all out at once. And then all of a sudden you're burned out and now you are rushing to get content up. I'm gonna be starting a new YouTube channel here pretty soon. And I already have two weeks of full length video content going out before I even launched the channel. And I have two months of shorts going out and scheduled before I've even launched the channel. I'm only gonna be doing two videos a week and one or two shorts a week to start. And that's a good pace. If you can do one to two videos a week or you can do one blog post a week or you can post maybe three or four times on TikTok a week because you really wanna post short videos more, then that's what you need to do. And it always depends on your circumstances as well how often you can post. If you have kids, you're not gonna have as much time as I do to create content as a married woman with no children. You're not gonna have as much time as me. So you need to manage your expectations of how much time you actually have. And it also depends on what type of content you're creating and how long it takes. If you are doing a sit down video and you know it's gonna take you 30 minutes to film, then maybe you can create less videos a week. But if you are creating a TikTok and you know it's gonna take you maybe 15 minutes or you can just pop out a video really quick like if you're really good and you don't even need a script and you can just pop out a video really quick, you can create those quicker. It really depends what you're creating, how much time you have and all those other factors before you decide like how much content can you keep up with. And if you know that you're starting a YouTube channel or a blog or something like I am, you can pre-plan for that and say, okay, I'm gonna try and have this many blog posts ready before I launch. And I don't want that to be the reason why you procrastinate though and push off your blog launch. Sometimes you just need to launch. If you are really scared to do it, that's gonna hold you back to create a bunch of content and that's gonna overwhelm you, then maybe just have one post ready, two posts ready. But if you know that you creating a bunch of content beforehand isn't gonna be the reason that you don't launch and that's kind of like your procrastination, then try creating a few videos, podcasts, TikToks, whatever, before you launch so that you can space them out and have a month of content maybe. So that way, if you, one week you can't write a blog post, you can then have some content kind of in the tank to help you along on your content creator journey. One of the big things that I think people really struggle with when they start creating content is learning how to authentically be themselves. This is something that I definitely have struggled with and I'm currently still working through is learning to let go a little bit online and be yourself and not be afraid to show a little bit of personality because it can be scary to put yourself out there on camera or really show your true passions on your blog or kind of show the imperfections of your life on TikTok, whatever it is that you're doing. It can be really hard to show who you actually are because then if you get hate comments on a specific thing, like let's say you're really insecure about your nose and someone in the comments, some mean hater says, you have a really big nose, that's gonna hurt you on a deeper level because that is an insecurity of yours. So as new content creators, we can almost hold back on showing who we authentically are or just sharing our truth in general. Like maybe you have a really controversial video you wanna put out, but you have a strong opinion on it and you wanna teach on it. We can maybe hold ourselves back from the type of content we create for fear of being judged, which is definitely a huge mindset shift 
that needs to be made. And it's 100% understandable when you are starting out as a content creator or just a person in general, because we don't want to be ridiculed or have any haters. And it's really, really hard to get out of that mindset. I'm struggling with it right now as well. So it's something that you just kind of have to work through and it will get easier the longer you do it. And the more you put yourself out there online, you will be more comfortable with it because it's gonna, your your level of comfort is just gonna raise because right now, like your comfort zone is right here and content creation is probably outside of that comfort zone because you're putting yourself out there online. But the good thing about comfort zones is they hopefully are not stagnant and they're, they can expand and they can grow. So you can grow your comfort zone to be including content creation, blogging, podcasting, TikToking, whatever, you can include that. And it's going to take a while. Like you are not going to come on camera and be perfectly confident. I definitely wasn't. I was terrified. And for a long while there, I had a script that I would read word for word. And if I messed up on a word or said something a little bit off script, I would re-say that thing over and over and over again until I got it 100% perfect, exactly as it was written. So this is just something that you're going to have to practice because I've definitely went through so many many mindset shifts to be able to speak like this on camera without having a script. So just keep at it and don't try to make everything super perfect. I think those are the biggest tips that I have for you guys, because again, there is no script. So I literally have no idea what I've said in this video because I have forgotten it all the moment that I've said it, but I hope it was still a good video. And if you want to check out more content creator tips from me, make sure to check out this video right here. Like this video if you like and subscribe to my channel down below for more videos just like this. And I'll see you next time. Bye.